tous, my name's Alice, and welcome back to my channel. While most conservative women won't brag about their feminism, um, the word conservative feminism actually does exist. The TV series The Crown is very interesting in that matter because it portrays two um, conservative women, Margaret Thatcher, a meritocrat, and the Queen, a monarch, two very powerful women. So what we're going to do is try to understand what do we mean by conservative women, uh, who are they, how do they balance public and private life, and yeah, just talk about The Crown because I really like this whole season. Let's jump into it, but first, let me grab some tea. Okay, so both Thatcher and the Queen are conservative women. Thatcher was elected to Parliament in 1959, became the first woman to lead the Conservative Party, and then became the first woman to become Prime Minister of the UK, a position she kept for more than 11 years. She is first introduced in the Crown through the lens of the British class system. As the Queen watches the news of her election, Prince Philip describes Thatcher in a sneering tone as the shopkeeper's daughter, to which Elizabeth replied, and now the man's shopkeeper's daughter, who worked hard and gained a scholarship to Oxford. So you immediately get that glass ceiling meritocracy metaphor that was actually used by Obama in 2013. He said that she stands as an example to our daughters, that there is no glass ceiling that can be shattered. So Thatcher did not despise women, yet she didn't do anything for them and she didn't have very high expectation in the first place. In the show, when Elizabeth says she assumed Thatcher won't include any women in her new cabinet, Thatcher replies crisply that there are no suitable candidates. I have found women in general tend not to be suited in high office. They become too emotional, Thatcher says. I doubt you'll have that trouble with me, Elizabeth clearly replied. So obviously this is fiction, there is clearly no evidence this conversation really happened, but I guess Thatcher's behaviour kinda speak for herself. In her 11 years in office, Thatcher only appointed one woman, and it was Baroness Young who's known to be the enemy of gay rights. Instead, she was the class example of a very specific type of conservative woman who believed that all women should pull themselves up, that women shouldn't be victims of their circumstances, but actors of their destiny. Natasha Reuter, a convinced conservative, said that she showed that although female power and masculine power may have different languages, different metaphors, different gestures, Different traditions, different ways of being glamorous and nasty, they are equally strong, equally valid. No one can ever question whether women are capable of single mind and vigour or efficient leadership after Margaret Thatcher. She is the great unsung heroine of British feminism. So that's the idea. Forget about privilege, forget about class, forget about gender bias. There is no obstacle if you work hard enough. I guess what Thatcher despised wasn't women as a group, but more what you would call feminine characteristics. Ooh, I don't like this term. So, emotionality, favouring security over risk-taking, not being hard-working, and yeah, having limited interest. And Thatcher was the complete opposite. Her dad made her different from the other girls, from her mother, from her daughter. And therefore, she deserved to be where she is. She earned it. Now, when it comes to the Queen, she's a conservative woman as well, but for a different set of reasons. She's the head of state and is supposed to represent the continuity of traditional values and a rich history. There are indeed expectations that come with being a Queen. Oh, really? The Queen is the guardian of the unity of the nation. She's the symbol of wealth, of ownership, and most of all, monarchy. She did not earn anything. She just happens to be the offspring of William the Conqueror who invaded England in 1066. That's it. <laughs> and I guess you can tell that tension between her and Thatcher, between the monarch and the meritocrat. It's just that defiance in the way they look at each other. Despite their frequent disagreements, there is a common point to both Thatcher and the Queen, and that's motherhood. I'm sorry, but we cannot talk about conservative women without talking about motherhood. No, no, no. In the TV series The Crown and in real life, both have been very much criticised as being bad mothers. While Thatcher refused to just restrain herself to those separate fear, to domesticity, 
She in turn had to face a lot of criticism on her way of parenting and motherhood. The allegation on her preferences for her son Mark over Carl, her lack of involvement in her family during her years as Prime Minister. In a way, she failed her women's duties by putting politics first, or at least that's how she's been repeatedly portrayed. Yet another way to see it is that Margaret Thatcher transferred motherhood from the private sphere to the public sphere. Indeed, Margaret Thatcher's conceptualization of politics is done using the metaphor of a nurse. In episode 5, she can be heard on the radio discussing what kind of nurse is better, one who caters to all their patients' needs and ensures they stay rest in bed, or one who encourages the patient to get up and take a few steps to keep their strength up. Well, Thatcher is the nurse! The language of care refers to what is expected of a woman to take care of her kids, to take care of her husband, take care of her family, and in this case, the entire nation. Now, while in the first season it appears that the Queen successfully maintained the stability of her family, um, she got her sister to break up with her lover, Peter Townsend, as he happened to be divorced and her father, which collided with the principal of the Anglican Church, and corrected her husband, Prince Philip's behaviour after some rumours of unfaithfulness. Naughty, naughty. Yet the final season shows the limits of her role. She forces Prince Charles and Diana to sort their marriage out, as Prince Charles is still seeing Camilla in secret. Charles and Anne are profoundly unhappy in their marriages. Infidelity and divorce are not considered acceptable in the conservative view of the Christian family. And a big part of this series is the Queen enforcing this view, on her kids, her sister, and herself. And Prince Andrew <sighs> clearly appears that he was involved in the Epstein business. Actually just enumerating all of that, just one after the other, makes me realise how bad it actually is. Poor Elizabeth. If you have followed the TV series since the beginning, or at least watched the first season, well you might have noticed that she's always portrayed as putting her monarch duties first. Yet while the combination of being a good mother and a good monarch seems to be quite challenging, the portrayal of bad mothers, uh, usually career-driven mothers, in the media tend to put those women in a very negative light. The first thing I thought about when I saw like how the Queen was portrayed throughout all the seasons, I literally only watched the first and the fourth part, <laughs> is the concept of Republican motherhood. Okay, we're talking about the Yanks now, so let me just get rid of that little <laughs> cup of tea. The concept of Republican motherhood dates back from 18th century America and refers to the then new role given to middle class, I insist on that, women, a uh, somehow political role. Women had the responsibility to pass on Republican values to their children who would then lead the nation. They were granted with this civic role um, a specific function in the household, educating the kids, checking their husband behaviour, or it reinforced the idea of separate spheres, women private and men public. It forced middle class women to educate themselves. It started with reading and writing, and then women could join um, classes, mathematical classes, for example. Well, I kind of see the Queen in that spectrum. The concept is really interesting, even if um, it's an American concept and we're talking about English monarchy. But the idea of caring for a nation, creating a sense of community and being a better, more educated monarch is something that was quite relevant in the case of the Queen. I mean, it's her duty to the nation. Just as a Republican mother, the Queen doesn't have a political role. Thatcher does. But the Queen, she has a civic role. She's not expected to get involved into politics, and when she does, it doesn't turn out well. Just think about that episode on the apartheid in South Africa. The way the press reacted to the Queen's interference in the debate over the economic sanctions on South Africa. It clearly was a scandal at that time. And I feel like compared to the first seasons, Peter Morgan, the director, really showed how insignificant the political role of the Queen is. On the other hand, Thatcher represents a new generation of conservative women who get involved into politics or male-dominated sectors. Indeed, today's conservative women will often brag about their ability to balance public and private life. You see them taking care of their home, taking care of their children, taking care of their husband, and they feel liberated because on top of all of that, they do also work. Some will argue that now women can get any job, that feminism isn't really a thing anymore, 
the feminists are victims and that we reach equal rights. Like seriously, what are you complaining about? Even the Republican Party in the US saw a record number of women joining Congress. It is true that women gain significance in the public sphere, largely thanks to feminist movements, but we have to bring nuances to that. These women, they are conservative, which means that they are more likely, when you compare them to liberal women, they are more likely to be in favour of set gender roles, meaning that, and we're going back to um, that conservative woman talking about Thatcher, um, that men and women have different qualities, they have different biological roles, that masculinity and femininity are two very different things. But also, and actually it's more or less related to uh, what I've just said and um, the idea of separate fear, is that even if women get into politics, they get out in the public sphere, very often they are associated with caring roles. You'll see more and more women in education, in medical professions, and when they are involved into politics, well, very often they will be in charge of the Ministry of Health, of education or culture. I recently watched a video from Ash Tanya, maybe you know her, probably not. She's another small YouTuber. I mean, she has more subscribers than me, but is it the right time to ask you to subscribe to my channel? I'm not sure. And yeah, she made a video on environmental environmental environmentalism. I haven't got it right. She made a video on environmentalism and women. And once again, it reflects this caring function that is constantly associated with women. And that goes back to that long history of uh, conservatism and women to Republican motherhood. Um, so yeah, still a lot of work to do. Well, that's it for today, folks. After the discussion, do you think something as conservative feminism can actually exist? Um, do you think that show was a feminist? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would be extremely grateful if you could like, comment, that's the right time, subscribe, but also share this video with a friend. Um, that would really help me to grow this little channel. So yeah, I'll find you in the comment section. And if not, you'll find me next week. Salut.